everyone i am going to present a rare case of permanent and refractory cns tb introduction mr x 18 year old male second born of non consanguineous marriage developmentally normal child presented with fever and headache for 20 days double vision and photophobia for 2 days and history of weight loss nearly 7 kg in past 2 months fever was low grade intermittent in nature evening rise of temperature was present headache was diffuse initially relieved with oral paracetamol was on 2 days prior to admission headache was associated with double vision uh, photophobia non projectile vomiting child was evaluated outside on opd basis initial investigation done were normal he was prescribed oral antibiotics for one week past history at 13 years of age child had first episode of right focal seizure mri brain and eeg done outside were normal child was started on oral phenytoin taken for 2 years seizure free during the treatment so phenytoin was tapered and stopped 6 months after stopping the medication child had second episode eeg done in srmc was normal oral phenytoin was restarted after remaining seizure free for 2 years and 6 months phenytoin was being tapered child also had pain in right hip for past 4 months with difficulty in standing after sitting on floor and squatting pain initially reduced after ayurvedic treatment but aggravated 2 months back he was evaluated in outside hospital in which crp was elevated and esr was normal ana and ds dna were negative mri bilateral hip showed features of inflammatory arthritis with synovial thickening and effusion in bilateral hip joints synovial tapping was advised but it was not done he was treated with oral analgesics hydroxychloroquine sulfasalazine for 2 months after which pain subsided no past history of tb infection and no family history of tb child was immunized according to national immunization schedule and last vaccine was given at 10 years of age general examination child was afable and he was hemodynamically stable no paler rictus cyanosis clubbing and lymphadenopathy pedal edema on head to foot examination bcg scar was absent his nutritional status was normal and his, his bmi was 18.2 kg per meter square falling under 10 to 25th centile cns examination child was drowsy but arousable gcs was 13 by 15 cranial nerve examination showed left lateral rectus palsy his tone was normal power was 4 by 5 in all four limbs bilateral knee and ankle jerks were exaggerated bilateral plantar was flexor in meningeal signs kernig sign was positive and neck stiffness was present fundal examination showed bilateral papillary edema and there are no signs of sensory cerebellar or autonomic dysfunction and other systemic examination were normal clinical diagnosis of subacute meningitis was made initial investigation showed elevated esr and crp cbc rft lft serum electrolytes urine protein and chest x ray were normal MRI brain with contrast showed features of multiple small cerebral tuberculomas with uh, uh, basal meningitis and ventriculomegaly. Child was investigated for TB. Gastric aspirate sent for a gene expert and EFB smear was were negative. Bantu test and HIV were negative. And in view of the increased ICT lumbar puncture was not done and child was started on anti tubercular drugs category 1 and dexamethasone based on classical findings of tb meningitis in neuroimaging anti edema neuroprotective measures were followed like 3% nacl was given as intravenous infusion head and was elevated at 30 degree and head was maintained in a neutral position normothermia and euglycemia were maintained ABG was monitored eight hourly and target PCO2 was set at thirty five to forty millimeter Hg. Target SpO2 was more than ninety five percent and target MAC was eighty millimeter Hg. Child was started on IV levetiracetam. Despite starting ATP four days later, child sensorium worsened. Child became more drowsy, not responding to commands. His GCS dropped to ten by fifteen and his pupils were dilated and sluggishly reacting to light. clinical diagnosis of tb meningitis with hydrocephalus and increased intracranial pressure was done made and the mri brain with contrast was repeated which showed communicating hydrocephalus and diffuse cerebral edema child was taken up for emergency ventriculoperitoneal shunt clear csf brain during procedure was sent for analysis which showed 
uh, 17 cells of uh, RBCs and uh, 6 cells of WBCs. CSF biochemical analysis was normal. CSF gene expert showed a mycobacterium TB bacilli detected low and it was sensitive to rifampicin. CSF AFB smear was negative. CSF bacterial culture and NZ culture showed no growth. After a VP shunt, child uh, sensorium improved, but uh, the so story doesn't end here. Uh, on POD3 of VP shunt, he had worsening signs of uh, iced ICT. He had a bradycardia, hypertension, and disordered breathing, that is crushing stryer. Child was intubated and connected to mechanical ventilator. His DCS was 3T by 15. Pupils were dilated and sluggishly reacting. This is the video showing uh, hyperventilation and bradycardia and the uh, hypertension. It shows the uh, impending herniation uh, futures. No issues. Proceed. Proceed to the next screen. If you if you have time, you can show your video at the end of the session. Okay, sir. Plain CT brain done showed worsening of diffuse cerebral edema, fourth ventricular size increased, mild cerebral tonsil herniation about seven millimeter. So child was taken up for emergency decompressive surgery. Posterior fossa decompression was done. Midline suboccipital craniotomy, removal of posterior arch of C1 was done. Peroperative findings, it was thick arachnoid granulations with the entire cerebellar tonsils being adherent to arachnoid. This is the image showing the posterior fossa decompression. This image shows thick arachnoid tissue with inflammatory uh, exudates adherent to cerebellum. Biopsy taken from inflammatory arachnoid tissue over the cerebellum was sent for histopathological examination and culture. Histopathology of arachnoid tissue was suggestive of tuberculous lesion and tissue AFB smear was positive. Bacterial culture showed no growth. This is the image showing tissue AFB smear positive for tubercle bacilli. Post craniotomy, child's GCS was 5T by 15, pupils were 3 millimeters, sluggishly reacting to light. Occasional signs of increased ICT was present. In view of permanent cause of illness, pulse methyl prednisolone was given based on a anecdotal evidence and it was given for five days. On POD5 or suboccipital craniotomy, MRI brain with contrast was repeated. It was suggestive of lacunar impact in the anterior limb of left internal capsule and adjacent left lentiform nucleus. MRI spine was suggestive of extensive cord edema from C2 to C7 vertebra. TB induced cerebral vasculopathy was considered and he was started on tablet aspirin, 150 mg per day. And in view of refractory fulminant course of TB, child was started on tablet thalidomide based on the available anecdotal literature evidence. In view of prolonged ventilation support, tracheostomy was done and child was subsequently weaned off from ventilator. A child had a bilateral hip arthritis, orthopedician opinion obtained and child was started on foam skin fraction. And uh, child was on intermittent urinary catheterization in, in view of uh, urogenic bladder. Child did not tolerate trial of oral fees. He had cough and signs of aspiration. Hence, he was advised to continue only NG fees. Tracheostomy decanulation was done on POD 30 of suboccipital craniotomy. And child was on multimodal rehabilitation program. Chest and limb physiotherapy and speech therapy were given. We had following changes during the long course of stay in the hospital, mainly sepsis. Blood culture taken during three different times showed growth of Klebsiella, Staphylococcus hominis, and Xenotrophomonas maltophilia. They were treated with appropriate antibiotics. Child had a, a fungal UTI, which was treated with uh, fluconazole, and child had also features of SAADH, which was not controlled with uh, fluid restriction and extra salt. So pediatric nephrologist opinion obtained and child was started on fludrocortisone. SIDH futures later settled and fludrocortisone was stopped in later data. Child also had sinus bradycardia. Pediatric cardiologist opinion obtained and child was started on osteoprenaline. Bradycardia settled and uh, osteoprenaline drug was stopped at later rate. 
child was advised to take ADT and pyridoxin for 11 months and tablet dexamethasone for 8 to 12 weeks, tablet talidomide and aspirin for 8 weeks, tablet levitracetam. Parents are counseled about the nature of illness, regular drug co compliance. Parents have been educated about the home care nursing of the child. Parents and family screening for TB were negative. Child was discharged on POD40 of suboccipital craniotomy with NG tube in situ. Condition at discharge, he was conscious. GCS was 15 by 15, obese comments, comprehends fully and unable to speak. A child was able to swallow liquids. Upper limb power was 3 by 5. Lower limb power was not able to test due to pain in the bilateral hip joint. Current condition was a regular follow-up with uh, Dr. Ranjit Kumar Manu answer. Currently, child is able to swallow semi-solid food, able to produce comprehensible words, able to pass urine and stool on his own. Is the video showing improvement in this higher mental function? We could not see your videos. The previous one, as well as the person, only with no issues. Okay. Right at the end of the session, 445 by 345. Okay. Done. Okay. It's more from your side. Okay. This uh, left side MRI was taken during the course of illness. It shows uh, leptomeningeal enhancement and basal exudate. And right side MRI was taken six weeks after discharge. It shows the clinical improvement in the condition of the child. Discussion. This is the modified velour grading of TB meningitis. Clinical predictors of permanent course of TB meningitis was persistent fever. Sarat, I think time is out, Sarat. Okay. Progression of stage three. CSF protein more than 100 mg per deciliter, hydrocephalus, and impacts on neuroimaging. Role of aspirin and thalidomide. Aspirin has both anti thrombotic and anti inflammatory effects. Its addition to dexamethasone may improve the outcome of TB meningitis. And several study report de reports definite immunomodulatory effects of thalidomide in TB meningitis. Paradoxical reaction analysis. Delayed inflammatory reaction which occurs weeks to months after starting ADT is called paradoxical reaction. An inflammatory reaction seen in HIV co-infected patient after starting ART is called IAS. Oh, okay. Dr. Radha, can you give the last take-home message slide? Yes, sir. Take-home point. Early identification and prompt treatment of TB meningitis is very important for better prognosis. Pediatricians should know about should know about the permanent causes of TB nature and multimodal uh, treatment is needed in this condition. We acknowledge the following themes for treating this child and thank you for listening to this presentation.